The number one thing that's slowing you down from getting better at logic is not knowing enough shortcuts, tips, and tricks. But luckily for you, I got a few up my sleeve that I think you're gonna love. Hey, what's up? This is Fabio from Noise here at Boombox, the home of collaboration. Let's jump in here with tip number one, speeding up your computer. Let's start by opening our logic settings and going to audio. There are a few things that you can do to make logic run faster. Let's take a look first at our audio settings. Now the processing threads is usually set to automatic, but I recommend setting it to whatever the highest possible number is. In my case, it's number 10 with eight high performance cores. I would also leave the process buffer range at large. And when it comes to the buffer size, when you're mixing and making music, have the buffer size as high as possible because because bigger is better, unless, unless you're recording vocals, in which case you actually want a lower buffer size because this will reduce the amount of latency. For those of you who don't know, latency is when you get a delayed signal between what's going in through a microphone or an instrument and what's and coming, coming out, out your, your monitoring, monitoring system, system i.e. Your, your speakers or your headphones. Your headphone. You might have had this problem before when you're recording. And so what you want to do is set your buffer size to about 128 or 64. Now, if you find that you're still getting latency, right click up here, go to customize control bar and display. And then you want to make sure that low latency monitoring mode is switched on. What will happen next is the speed dial icon will show up. Just click on it to engage low latency monitoring. If you're playing back tracks that have a lot of processing, like this vocal, for example, which has gain, EQ, soothe, auto tune, a compressor, and ascend, you can right click on the channel, scroll down to track header components, head over to freeze, and you'll notice that the snowflake appears in the channel strip. Now, when you turn this on and you press play, it will render that channel as audio and turn all the plugins off. So any effects that you have on that channel, you will not be able to edit unless you unfreeze it. But because this disables the plugins and just plays the rendered audio, it saves a lot of computer processing power. Another reason why your computer may be running slow is because you have a lot of plugins or effects open on channels. Take a look at my master bus. I've got a lot of processor heavy plugins on here, some of which I'm not even using, but going through and deleting them one by one is tiresome. So what you wanna do is head up to this top bar here and you can remove all the bypassed plugins. And boom, just like that in one go, you saved yourself some power. Alternatively, if you wanna get rid of all of them at once, you can also go down to reset channel strip. Another tip for saving time is if you do have a bunch of effects or plugins that you use regularly in that order, click on that menu button above the channel strip again and go to save channel strip setting as. Then here you can name and save the sequence of effects that you like to use the most. And you can access them anytime from the user channel strip settings. Let's talk recording tricks. Let's turn that low latency button on from before. Now you'll notice when I record enable a channel, certain effects turn orange. And that's because Logic recognizes that those plugins will create latency when recording, which would be a nightmare for any vocalist or instrumentalist trying to play or sing in time. But on this send, I do have a reverb that I want to be able to hear. So I'm gonna click and hold and go to low latency safe. This will allow me to have the send and use the reverb when I'm recording. Now, if I have a take like this set up and I just wanna record over a certain section, I have two options. One is punching in. Make sure it's record enabled, hit the space bar, and when you're ready to record, hit R. Imagine with me for a second we were dancing. The other much more accurate option, which I prefer though, is using the marquee tool. So make sure you have the marquee tool set up as your command click tool. Now, when I hold command, I can click and drag with the marquee tool over the section that I want to record. Now, all I have to do is press record. Now, just like these shortcuts make your life easier, so does Boombox. Create projects, add collaborators, and receive timestamp feedback in the form of text and or voice notes, saving you so much time trying to scramble for notes and emails, WhatsApp, iMessages. You can also quickly and easily share files, create playlists, and we're just starting to build out our network artist profiles, which will soon be a space where artists can engage with fans. As a musician, producer, or engineer, you'll be able to sell your services, and most importantly, a great place to connect, collaborate, and take your music to the next level by working with new talent. Sign up today and you get four gigabytes for free. Plus, it's only 200 gigabytes for the price of a cup of coffee. If you're a fan of Logic, which I imagine you are, that's why you're here, then you'll know and love using the Channel EQ. So we all know that you can boost and cut like this with the bells, the shelves, and so on. But if you actually click on one of these frequency points, this will select the band. And then this gives you access to a few more tools. So if you hover over the vertical line, you can click and drag this up and down 
to move just the game. And if you go to the corner, you get these four arrows where you're able to do both. If you hold Option and Command, you can simultaneously adjust the Q and the frequency point. The analyzer also has a few options. If it's in post, then you're seeing the changes to the frequencies after any EQ changes that you've made. You also have pre, which are the frequencies showing up before any changes are made to the EQ. If you right click on the analyzer, you also have two modes, peak, which is its default and RMS. You can also mess with the resolution, low, medium, and high. You'll notice though that the signal coming through the EQ is quite quiet and we can't quite see all the frequencies, but don't worry, here's another hack. If you click and drag on the left hand side of the EQ and drag up or down, you can actually move where the analyzer sits, allowing us to see all the frequencies, even if they're really low in volume. One of my other favorite things about the channel EQ is even if you decide after all those changes that you want to switch to a linear phase EQ, you can do so without having to redo your parameter changes. Just by selecting the linear phase EQ, it switches to that mode and keeps everything that you've done. Another shortcut that not a lot of people know, which saves so much time, is the reset to parameter default. And all you have to do for this is hold option and then click. Anything that belongs to Logic, such as the panning, the metering, or any of their plugins, will reset to its default parameter value, which is usually zero, which is very useful when you have a send and you just want to turn it all the way up. An easy way to nudge parameters to the left and right is by holding option and then pressing left or right on the D-pad. If you hold option and you press up or down, you'll notice on the region window, it starts saying plus five, plus six, and so on. What you're actually doing here is transposing up and down in pitch. The entire world was watching. But let's come back to nudging for a second. You can change your nudge value by right clicking, going to move, and then going to set nudge value two. Right now it's set to a bar, but you can set it to any of these different steps that might suit you better. When it comes to dragging regions over one another, you'll notice that usually it just cuts the other one out. However, if you go to this drag menu up here, you have a few options. The other one you're most likely to use is X fade. This is gonna create an equal power crossfade and its size depends on how much you drag one region over the other. A lot of people like to loop their regions by going to the top right hand corner and using the loop function like this. Or alternatively, you can press L on your keypad. However, I've always found this to be messy and inaccurate accurate, especially if the regions don't line up to the bar. My preferred way is actually using the marquee tool, selecting the section that you want to repeat and then using command R. This way I can repeat the region accurately as many times as I'd like. Something really cool that Logic has is the ability to go into other projects and copy and paste settings. From the right hand panel here, I can browse files on my computer. I can then open up a project and right now it's showing me the different auxiliary channels that I have set up. Now from here, I can actually add those auxiliary channels to my project by selecting them and then pressing add. And then in my project, I can see the kick and bass and drums all channels with the plugins from the other project added to my current one. This prevents you from having to close the current project and open the other one in order to copy your settings. And in the end, saves you so much time. Thanks to Boombox for making all of these videos possible. Don't forget that you can sign up in the link in the description below. It's entirely free. Set yourself up with four gigabytes of storage today. It's been a pleasure as always. This is Fabio from Noise and I'll see you very soon. Peace.